Hey, y'all, and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Money. I'm Money T. And I am Simply C. We have a, uh, oh, shoot, I was about to get started real quick. Before we get started, I would like for you to subscribe to our channel. Yes, if you would be so kind. To stop and to subscribe. stop and subscribe. Hit the like button, the bell notification, and share, 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 share. So, who we got today, girl? Today, we are talking to our dear friend, Smitty, Mr. No Starting Himself, that guy with the green jacket. Yes. Yes, he yes, is joining yes. us, Smitty. Welcome to welcome, welcome. Let's Talk Money on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon, ladies. Hello there. I know you've been with us before. Yes. On our other platform, well, you know, we are uh, doing big things now here on YouTube. We are. So people finally get to see the no starter. Yes. 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 He's so serious right now. Oh, yeah, I'm just right. telling you. <laughs> but this is, tell, this, is for those, this is good. Yeah. For those who don't know you and haven't heard about notes, can you start off telling us what? notes are yes i can so basically uh plain and short notes is buying paper versus the actual real estate so just like a bank if you uh have a house note um you pay the bank monthly uh until your house note is fulfilled and then you get the house and that's what, exactly what i do i buy the paper so people pay me just like a bank and I always say just like a bank but I am the bank so I own notes and I have borrowers that pay over a certain time period uh, whatever that may be 10 years 15 years 30 years or whatever and I collect that money it's true passive income mm. sounds so good so um you said it's true passive income. Mm -hmm. What what all do you have to do? Like, is it a lot of work? No, it's not like a lot of work at all. It's a lot of uh, basic um, computer work. So I can do this anywhere in the world. So I can buy uh, the paper on, you know, uh, from banks by doing business, you know, online through through my bank. Um, and the only thing that I do is to make sure, um, like prior to purchasing a note that I go through and do, you know, our due diligence by, um, checking for one to make sure that the asset itself, the house is there before you purchase the note, uh, make sure that, you know, I may have to pay the taxes or there's insurance because, um, in this business, uh, you're actually buying the contract, but you also have to make sure that that collateral is there. So that's how we actually uh, make sure that um, our note is secure is by the house itself. So when I buy paper, I make sure taxes is paid, make sure insurance is, pay is, is on the house uh, before I purchase it. Because you could actually buy a contract and turn around and and go out wherever the property is and it's not there that's that's happened to people before so it's a part of due wow. diligence and going out and, and checking wow could you imagine no yeah. <laughs> be so mad yeah and that's a part it's just a part of you know prior to purchasing the note you know we go through you know like a 60 point checklist to make sure you know that asset is uh, worth buying so I'm going to give you uh, an example uh, on how you know great the business is on the on the great side. So if, uh, for example, if somebody uh, has a, let's use some even numbers and say they own a $100,000 uh, house and they actually owe $100,000, I could probably just depending on um, how the note is performing or whatever, we can get into that later. I can usually buy that paper anywhere from half price uh, on up to 90 cents on the dollar. It's just how much it's, it's paying. So say for instance, I buy it for 60 cents on the dollar. So I could go in there and purchase it for 60 grand, okay? 
So at that point, that person that owns that house note, they will start paying me and say they're paying five hundred dollars a month. And they say say they're paying 10 percent interest. So um, what happens is, is that 10 percent, which of the five hundred dollars that they pay, fifty dollars is going to their principal and I'm collecting pretty much the rest of it. So at the end of the year, they have paid six hundred dollars and I've collected six thousand. That is crazy. It is. And that's really a whole nother show <laughs> talking yeah. about paying off your mortgage. Oh, my right, goodness. Right. And, and you wow. know, most of the people, you know, most of the notes that I have, nobody pays over. They just pay, you know, what's what's required of them. And they don't realize all the interest um, that's occurring when when they're paying that house note they just know that hey i've got 30 years to pay for it so i'm gonna take 30 years man yeah and, and i, I mean people say that too yeah and and it's and it's all gravy for me <laughs> <laughs> you know if you start thinking about all that interest it's just crazy. burning up just burnt up. yeah that's crazy yeah. and that's so, i mean and that's why you know banks do what they do absolutely you know? yeah yeah, that's why they got all the absolutely. Cheese. Yeah. So I know there are two different types of notes that you can buy, and you can you mentioned one. Mm -hmm. or, so yeah, you have. I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, you have uh, kind of three types. Uh, you have a performing, which means that they're paying like clockwork every month, and then you have a non-performing where they're not paying at all. And then you have a sub performing and that's where you kind of bid the scale on how you want to pay for that note. You can also kind of think of it as a house. If a house is completely fixed up, you're going to get top dollar for it. Mm -hmm. If it needs work and it's ran down, if like it same as not performing, then you're going to get a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. If it's mid grade to where all you got to do is a little of this, a little of that, same thing, sub performing. So, there's three different categories when you purchase notes, uh, particularly for me and my business. I like the non-performing side because you can get them at a, a, a really good rate and there's different extra strategies you can take when you when you purchase those. So let's take that same hundred thousand um, dollar note that we had talked about before. If they're not paying. Uh, just, let's just say I buy it for half that and say that the house is worth, you know, because most banks don't give you a hundred percent loan. You have to put something down, say it's worth $110,000. So the house exactly is worth 110,000. So if I pay 50 and they're not paying, if I have to, you know, evict them or foreclose on them. So I would have to spend some money. Let's just say five to $8,000. I can get that house back. I foreclose on it, get the house, and depending on the condition of the house, I can sell it for that price. So the key is is buying low, having equity in the paper that you buy, yeah. Um, and and then you can turn around, sell it, or you can take it for a rental if you want, or you can sell it to someone, make it out of an Airbnb, or you know cash it out and start all over again. So can you buy uh, houses anywhere in the United States? Yes. I mean, we'll buy, buy notes. Yeah, you can buy notes anywhere in the United States. Um, Hawaii. Um, yeah, all 50 states. Now, granted, some areas are much harder to come by uh, because some areas where like the way it is, is like these hedge funds, they buy like pools of notes like hundreds of millions of dollars you know like four and five hundred and they just buy a pool so they take off what they want and then they pass them on to the next fund manager which may buy 50 million and then they take what they want and then they end up and i'm like way down on the food chain right <laughs> <laughs> so you know i get to pick you know i get to pick the table scraps but the table scraps can give you big returns Mm -hmm. You know, it can give you huge returns. But back to what you were saying, like areas like California, Arizona, you know, Seattle, where, where 
you know, I usually don't get to see those notes because people usually in those areas are paying. Mm -hmm. So generally where I see a lot of notes are uh, Ohio, Georgia, Texas, Missouri, uh, Kansas, Florida. Uh, we see them in New York as well. So there are certain states that I won't buy in just because of the foreclosing, like New York, New York and New Jersey. I just heard yesterday that it takes four years to foreclose on a house in New Jersey. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So think think of it as a, you know, if you are a borrower not paying, you got four years to squat. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> and part of it is just because of COVID. You know, just things are just just backed up. So I'm going through a uh, an actual foreclosure now uh, in Alabama, and you know it 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 could probably take you know 12 months, possibly. Isn't it Gulf Shores? I'll just say Alabama. Uh, <laughs> so really, you have to be patient when doing oh, yeah. it. Also, it's, it's, it's not it's like being, quick quick mm -hmm. money. It's yes, yeah, it's, it's it's like being patient. And if you are not patient, this is not the, the, the thing for you to do. Um, because on the flip side, while you're going through that, um, depending on the asset, it could be appreciating. So mm -hmm. next year, if it's worth $100,000 and if your market's growing, you know, six or 7%, then, you know, you tack on six, 7%, which it, next year it could be worth 117,000, mm -hmm. you know, so you look on that on that side too yeah so are, are i mean you said new york and jersey it just made me think about the price level price on yeah mm -hmm. on those mm -hmm. and Even, yeah and it's it's yeah the price points are high so it's just you know will if are you willing to tackle those areas so i mean i have investors that i know that that buy in that area mm -hmm. you know and don't have a problem of doing it and the, mm -hmm. and the key is, is once you're once you buy a note um and i know you have to start somewhere but it's always good to have a focus that once you buy one you're going to buy another because if you buy one you're just going to hone in onto that one note and if it doesn't do good it's going to kind of change your mindset so it's always good just like a portfolio of stocks sure. Sure. You know, you got a portfolio of stocks. You got this one doing good, this one doing good, this one doing, and maybe that one's not doing so good, but your overall portfolio is doing okay. Mm. So, so can a person make, so can a person become a millionaire off of this? And not only that, is it like a five-year plan? You know, like some people can be in the next four years or whatever, they get so many doors. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And then before you know it, they're they're millionaires because they have all these doors. What about it, notes? Yeah, it's it's possible to do. I mean, not saying that it's impossible. I've heard that there are people that have done it. Of course, the more uh, capital that you have to deploy, the easier it is to be becoming that millionaire. And I was listening to a guy the other day and he was talking about the same thing. He was like, if you've got a million dollars to deploy and just say you're making, you know, 10 or 15 percent, that's one hundred thousand dollars a year. So think of it as that. So, I mean, you can potentially do it, but it's going to take some work. And the way you can do that by scaling that business is, for one, come in with lots of capital. If you don't have lots of capital, then you raise money. You know, you try to get bring other investors in to make money um, with the assets that you purchase. And that's one of the things that we do is that if you have, you know, if you're an investor and you're looking either to one, be in the note game or if you just want passive income, you know, we work with with people, um, with partners and taking down notes and assets. That's cool. I mean, it sounds like a really good way to uh, diversify. Yeah, your it is. Portfolio. You know, if you if you're coming in to to be a millionaire and you're starting from scratch, yeah, it's gonna take some time, just like anything mm -hmm. else. But the more capital you have, the better off you are, and the harder and how hard do you want to work? You know. 
So I guess that'll really lead into the way people can get money. And you were saying that that you can use like old uh, 401k money. Can you kind of explain that? Yeah. So for me, um, like they have what they call a self-directed IRA, where you can take some of your old IRA money that you have from a previous job. Like say you had a 401k and it's just sitting there not doing anything, you can you can convert that to what they call a self-directed IRA to where you can actually purchase notes from that. So I've got notes that's in my portfolio right now that I've had from a previous job. I moved it over and I purchased notes out of that. So it's just like any other um, place where you put your money and mm -hmm. you can grow it until you get 60, whatever, 59 and a half. And then you can get the money. Same thing with buying notes in the self-directed. Like those notes are making money or maybe not making money right now. It just depends because a performing note can go non-performing. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and as that money is growing, you know, it's just growing inside my IRA. Once I turn 59 and a half, then I can pull that money out. Same thing as a regular 401k where you're investing in stocks and things like that. Okay. That's yeah. cool. Sounds good. Yeah. That's so so cool. just, just touching back on like performing notes and think of it as this, that like with COVID where people were paying their house payments and things were going good, you, you can quickly have a performing note that can go non-performing. So if you, you know, due to COVID, you lost your job or, you know, you got laid off or whatever and you were pay, making your house payments. And now all of a sudden that house, that note that you bought can go from performing to not. And the good thing about us versus a federal back bank is that we can be really creative with the borrowers. We, we have more of like a, a personal touch with them, because if you call a bank and say, hey, I just lost my job. I can't, you know, pay. You know, of course, COVID put in stipulations to where, you know, yeah, if you're just a regular person and lost your job, you know, we'll we'll work with you versus a bank that says, oh no, you know, you've got this time to pay and blah blah blah. We can we can say, okay, we can maybe do a modification on your loan or let's 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 see what we can work out, uh, which is good. And a lot of people in this industry, um, are really kind and they don't they're not in the business of foreclosing and throwing people out of their home because mm -hmm. every one of these notes that i have there's a family that they, that lives there every yes. single one yeah yeah so what about credit reporting yeah Do some of the yeah some of the servicers uh that we have and and to back up a little bit the the notes that i have i don't I don't service notes when I say service, like I don't send out payments or anything like property managers are for rentals. Yeah. I have a servicer that handles my notes. So they call into them, uh, make their payments or they call out to the borrowers and say, hey, you're late. You need to pay um, if the if their house payment has escrow, they pay the taxes and insurance and all of that. So I have um, basically a servicer that that manages that. Yeah, that's that's the cool kind of passive part. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. That you I know, like the thing is, is, you know, I have to manage the servicers just to make sure that, you know, everything is right with them and they're doing what they need to do. So I have to just kind of police them a little bit. So the server did he answer? So the servicers uh report the um credit. Oh, the credit. Yes, credit. I went off on a tangent. Yes. Yeah, so some, yeah, some services <laughs> I was going to go back to it. <laughs> yep, I, I just completely lost so now, it. So Matt, the dog can't answer the question. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, some services do, do credit reporting um, for for their their payments, which is which okay. is good. Mm -hmm. it, it is. It's good. I think that's important too because we talk. I mean, I know I've heard um, stories about people being even in rental properties and how that payment history is not reported. And then a person who's trying to get credit for something else, you know, they don't have that history right, um, right. in their credit report and uh, to prove that they do make that they do our payment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some so of them do. Pretty important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think we've covered the things that we want to cover today, except for how a person gets started. Yeah. And um, buying notes, if that's something that they're interested in doing. Yeah. So if you want to get started in notes, um, for one, you can contact me. Um, my uh, contact information, you can go to www.notestarter.com. Or you can reach me at my email address at wsmith at notestarter.com. Uh, one of the things that I do suggest anybody that's interested is the first thing you do is go out to YouTube. Go to YouTube, get some YouTube University, and start looking up notes. I have a YouTube page. You can also uh, go to Note Starter. Just type in Note Starter, and you should see me pop up and just look at some of the videos that i have there's also podcasts that are available out there that you can do all of that for free so that's one of the first things that you can do and then the second thing is is trying to figure out what you want to do you know uh to just to be just to be honest you have to have some type of money to get started yeah so i would say you know you should have at least 10 to 15 grand to get started that would get you started you know, buying, buying a note, um, even buying um, a second position note, they have first and second. So it just depends on what you want to do. But you, you will have to have capital. Now, they also there's a lot of people out there that start with no money at all. And what they do is broker notes. They find buyers and sellers and connect them together. Same thing as all these wholesalers out here that are getting find these houses and putting them under contracts and finding buyers and sellers, same thing. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work trying to do that, uh, but it can be done. Uh, so that's another way you can actually get started. And also raising money, raising other people's money to get things started. So say, you know, if you wanna get started in it and you know a family member that's got some money, you know, like I said, in a 401k, uh, you can use other people's money to get started. So there's there's some creative ways that you can, you know, get started in the note space. Because you have people that are probably not even interested. They just like, give me the returns. Yes. Hey, here's my money. Give me the returns. Yep. There are a lot of people that are interested. Like I have uh, one partner right now. He he told me last week. He says, Smitty, I don't I don't want to do anything. I just want to, you know. <laughs> get a get a good return on my money sound but like me, sound like thing, me too. <laughs> right. but the thing about that is you have to be careful because this is how you know the sec securities exchange commission they put in specific rules that mm -hmm. when you do a jv partnership they have to have some type of involvement whatsoever it could be you know small thing you know hey go check the taxes or hey go call this and do this but uh, they have to do a little something so, you know, that I'm not in violation and I don't end up in SEC jail, you know? No kind of jail. Yes. But saying taxes made me think of another topic for our next episode with Note Starter. I'd like to dig a little bit into if a person uh, is not on... Um, what's the thing where you escrow uh -huh. and they don't pay taxes. And so just a little, little more about all the things about notes, I think. Right. So I have just, yeah. just a quick example. Um, and it's all, it's all how it's written in the contract because I can, there's a couple of note holders that they don't pay taxes uh, on their actual contract. But that's what they call a contract for D. And it's just written up in the contract where you either pay escrow and uh, use escrow to pay taxes insurance or not. My business model, you have to, as a borrower, you're going to pay taxes insurance because mm -hmm. it's eating, you know, it's eating into my profit. If I got to pay right. taxes insurance, right. And let, you know, and, you know, getting, getting the, the note. So it's your property. You pay tax insurance on yeah yeah well thank you for coming back on and 
enlightening us again and spreading some knowledge on notes. And we all love passive income. I love right. passive income. And one thing uh, I wanted to mention that um, if you do go to my YouTube channel, I started a new uh, series called Cliff oh, Notes. Yeah. Yeah. And what it is, is that I'll be going uh, probably once a week or so, uh, putting out new videos about uh, various things in the note industry because, you know, I haven't been doing it that long. So I've been digging into um, various topics that I want to dig into and understand. And what I'm doing is putting those out on YouTube and sharing them with um, people that are in the space or people that's interested. That's awesome. So go Everybody out there and learn together. Yep. Getting that note knowledge together. For sure. For sure. Well, you are an impressive individual, Mr. <laughs> Smitty. Thank you. Thank you. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> you were smart. You were smart, you smart and kind. Smart. You was important. Oh, and and you is her husband. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so I got a little that helps a little bit. Okay, right, yep. right. Thank Again, you for thank having you me us. and thank you for rocking the note starter shirt. Yeah. Yes. Y'all didn't even give me that. Hey. So hey. 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 <laughs> we don't didn't even give me one. You better get your sis one. Yeah, man. I gotta get her one too. So all shady. Right. After all I done done for you. <laughs> I know. I got you. Thanks for joining us. We will see you downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Later. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, and thank you once again for tuning in to Let's Talk Money. You can find us here every Monday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will be alerted every time new content is aired. Come on, y'all. Tell your mama them, your cousin them, all of them. Tell them all. Tell them to subscribe and listen to Let's Talk Money. Yes, and be sure to leave us some comments. Chat with us. We'll be chatting live at times, so chat with us. Hey, remember, your money mindset matters. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Peace, y'all. Peace.